Please rise as you are able and let us sing together our opening song.
Oh God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the opportunity to gather with one another to share in our faith, in our journey with you. Come Holy Spirit, fill this place with your presence. Speak to us, touch us, challenge us, love us as only you can. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. I don't know what's wrong this morning, but I feel like I've got something on cricket. I don't know if I do or not, but it feels that way. <clears throat> so, you know, if I keep doing this, you'll know. <laughs> We're so glad to welcome you to worship this morning at Inclusive Community Church, especially if it's your first time to worship with us. We really are glad to welcome you. We don't think of you as a visitor. We think of you as our guest. So as our guest. Anything we can do to make your stay more pleasant, please let us know. See, I'm just the pastor of the church. The people who are sitting around you are the ministers of this church. So let us minister to you in any way that we can. We uh, will have a time of fellowship after the service with a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and a piece of cake. So I hope that you'll stick around after worship, get to know us a little bit better, and have some fellowship with us. It takes place in our church hall, which is right through that back door. So I hope that you'll stick around and get to know us a little bit better. <clears throat> um, we do have some name and address cards available, so just see one of us after the service, and we'll be glad to get one to you. And uh, you can give us your contact information, and that just allows us to stay in touch with you and know what's going on in the life of the church. Just a couple of notices. This Thursday is our monthly praise and prayer service. Uh, so I hope that you come to that Thursday at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. It's a little bit more informal service where we gather and just sing uh, several uh, courses and worship, spend time praying, uh, sharing with one another. So I hope that you join us for that 7 o'clock on Thursday. And then also uh, don't forget that if you're interested in going on retreat with us, it's not until November, the first weekend in November, first, second, and third, uh, Friday through Sunday. But you'll want to reserve a place. We are going to Lee Abbey in Devon, and uh, it's we are going as part of Lee Abbey. We're not; it's not just going to be our church there. There will be other people there, uh, and so the rooms are first come, first serve. And if especially if you want a single room, I encourage you to book early. They have a tendency to go first. So if you would like to go, uh, it's 170 pounds for the weekend uh, in a standard room. To something. 220, I think it is for a, a on the suite. So I hope that you'll go with us and enjoy it. We, we went last year and it was a wonderful time. Uh, in fact, anybody who went last year, they can tell you. All right, uh, we continue in the season of Easter time, celebrating the resurrection. And today, specifically, we talk about Jesus as our shepherd. Uh, this is the Good Shepherd Sunday. Every year, as on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we talk about Jesus being the Good Shepherd, and that will be what our theme of our sermon is this morning. So we are glad that you have joined us. And to prepare our hearts a little bit more for worship, we're going to sing and just see what God might do in our midst this morning. So I invite you to rise as you are able, and let us sing and get our eyes and our minds upon God and remind ourselves that God is the one who is in charge this morning.
He's saying, victory in Jesus. And I know we don't sing that one much here, but it's one of my favorite ones in childhood. Because it reminds us that in Jesus, we have victory over anything and everything that comes our way. Then we say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And I like that second verse that reminds us of you know, how wonderful a newborn baby is. And I remember I used to think, you know, part of me is kind of gay. I'm glad that I'm gay, that I won't have any kids to bring up in this crazy world. Because Lord knows when they get older what the world's going to be like. But that song reminds us that we don't have to worry about that because Christ lives. Whatever happens in the future, God is with us. And we say, how great is our God. Sing it with me. How great is our God. How great is our God. God is greater than whatever you're facing this morning. God is bigger. God knows all the details, every last one of them. God knows your body down to the minutest little molecule, or whatever's the smallest thing I forget. God knows how much money is or isn't in your bank account, or how much is overdrawn. God knows that challenge you face at work. God knows how you are having difficulty getting along with your family. God knows the struggle you have with your neighbors. God knows your doubt of your faith. God is greater than. So whatever you come with this morning, I invite you, if you would like, to come and just stand along the front here. And I have a little vial of anointing oil. Just in the Bible it says, in the book of James, if any are sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, let them anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith will heal the sick and God will raise them up. So whether your sickness is physical or mental or emotional or financial or <coughs> relationship, whatever, God is greater than that. So if you would like prayer, I invite you to come forward. And I will anoint you with oil and together we Now the rest of you, I invite you to come forward and stand behind me, if you wish. You don't have to, but if you would like to. And you pray with me for them. And I invite you to go ahead and just reach out and touch them. Now remember, don't lay your hand on their shoulder and rest it, because then all they're going to be thinking about is how heavy your hand is. <laughs> If you touch him on the back, don't push. <laughs> you, you know, the reason I've heard this is because I've had this happen to me. I've seen so many hands on you, you're like, <laughs> whenever you're, you're ordained, one of those, it's like all these clergy with their hands on you, and you're like, oh, I will think right fast. <laughs> Neither of us have happened to you. Some are pushing you forward, and others are pushing you back. We're not going to do that. It's just simply touching. So let that person know that you are. Putting them in your prayers. 
So I'm going to start at one end and go through the other and anoint them. special about this oil. I have been brought in from Jerusalem or anything like that. What it symbolizes is the Spirit of God is present in us throughout Scripture. That's what oil represents. And when we anoint, it's simply reminding us and asking for God's presence to come and reminding us that God's presence is with us. So I'm going to pray and invite those in the back row to pray as well, and with those of you who are here, pray. Don't be afraid to pray for yourself, that's okay. You need to pray for others too. Pray for what the Spirit needs you to pray for. Now, some of you are just sitting back there and saying, well, I'm glad the way he's praying this morning, because his prayer is going to be better, and he's got more faith, etc. You know, when we pray, it's not your faith that does anything. Okay? You're not doing anything by praying. It's God who is doing it. Your faith isn't in you and how good you pray or don't pray. Your faith is in God's ability. So whether you're praying a long, beautiful prayer like Peter or Paul prayed or Jesus, or whether you're simply saying, God, help me. It's all dependent on God. So let's pray. Oh God, <clears throat> we come to you in prayer this day. You see the many who have come forward, God, representing numerous needs. God, we lift them up to you. We pray for each one that has come forward because we know that it's beyond us, but it's not beyond you. You are great, and because you live, Lord Jesus, you who got victory over death, hell, and the grave. You are victorious, and you are bringing victory in each one's life. Whether it is a physical need, God, reach down and touch the body, bring healing, bring wholeness. Oh God, you who knows our bodies better than anyone, better than any doctor, you know the details, you know what is there and what needs to be done. So God, we pray that you would step in and heal. God, for those with relationship issues, oh God, you know all of the details. You know our personalities. You know our ins and outs and our rights and wrongs and all of our little idiosyncrasies. God, you are more than able to help mend and mold people together. Help them see each other with your eyes and to love as you love unconditionally. God, for issues with neighbors or work colleagues or, or fellow, fellow students or friends, God, move and, and work out all of the details and bring peace, bring wholeness, bring love and care. God, there's enough hurt in this world let us not hurt one another, we pray. God, for those facing financial issues and problems, worried about how they're going to pay for things, or worried about their job, maybe losing it, or, or their income going down, whatever it might be, God. Scripture says, our God owes the cattle on a thousand hills. Just a way of saying, God has everything we need. You are not bankrupt at all. Provide, God. God, for all other things, maybe some that I missed, you don't miss it, God. You know. 
Do you hear the cry of the heart this morning? God is saying, lift each one here. Lift up their name to me. We are thankful because we know you hear. We know you care. We know you love us more than we could ever imagine. And we know that you are working all things out for our good. We may not understand why, when, how, but your word gives us that promise. You work things out for our good. So we let it go and we rest in you this morning. And as we've anointed one. May your Holy Spirit rest upon each one. And may they, as they go throughout this day, throughout this week, this month, this year, may they know that the Spirit, God's Spirit, is resting upon them and those who have come. Guiding and leading the way for life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our God, we pray. Amen. 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 Full victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath his cleansing blood. Blood? Something. <laughs> All right, you babies. No, don't say it. It's time to read our scripture. So stand back up. And we'll, sing, we'll sing our gradual. Uh, as uh, Sue comes to read our scripture. Yeah, go for it. snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the heavenly parent knows me, and I know the heavenly parent. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the heavenly parent loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from the heavenly parent. This is the gospel of Jesus. Praise you.
one of the things you forget when you're anointing people with oil is to bring a rag or a kitchen roll or something to wipe it off your hands because you get quite a bit of it on. So my hands smell really nice, but it's driving me crazy. All right. I know that a number of you have pets or have had pets. What I want to ask you is, what does your pet do when you had pets? What did your pet do that annoys you? Something that your pet does that annoys you and bothers you, you just wish they wouldn't do it. Share. Wakes you up early. Ah, uh, yes. Shredding the furniture. Shredding the furniture. Yeah. Other stuff? They cost a lot of money. They <laughs> cost a lot of money. Yeah. Don't eat dirty clothes because you're not allowed to buy that. Say that again. You're not allowed to buy that. Oh, yeah. Did it? Yeah, she's not living with me, but she pulls on the carpet because she's so old, she's oh. walking. <laughs> she's, she's old and she can't quite make it outdoors. <clears throat> Anybody else? Barks when anybody comes to the door. Or Bark. Or goes past. Barks as soon as somebody comes to the door or walks past. I can testify that to, the, to my neighbor. <laughs> Never heard a little dog bark so much. But uh, I, I know a lot of you think I don't like dogs and cats. I really do like dogs and cats. It's just there's certain things they do that I don't like. <laughs> I don't like the fur on me because it makes my nose run and blot up. The main thing, though, I don't like. To, when I was younger, we had a numerous dogs and cats, but mainly three dogs. We had an older border collie. You guys have seen the show Lassie? And I, we, we had a dog that looked very much like Lassie. Lighter colored, kind of light brown, tan colored, and much more thicker fur. Then we had a German Shepherd that was black. Now, the, the collie's name was Tippy. He was in the family before I was born, so I don't know where Tippy came from. The German Shepherd, I vaguely remember when we got him, but he was black. I would I think a little bit of white on him. And we were very creative in the names of our pets. Our black German Shepherd's name was Blackie. <laughs> and he kind of became my brother's dog. When I was early teens, we had to put down the collie because he got so old, dark, gritty. And then we had a little, we would say Dachshund. You would say Dachshund or something. I can't ever say it correctly here, but a Dachshund. Uh, he was not quite like most of society. He had to be a mixed breed somewhere, I, I'm guessing. But he was about that big around. <laughs> not fat, just solid. Mm. And his neck was about that big around. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, he would, he'd stand and was, get, I used to push down on his head, and he would just stand there. <laughs> just really strong muscles in his head. And again, I, I did name the Dobson. And very creative. Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the dog. My mother would never have animals in the house. We live, I mean, our nearest neighbors were half a mile away. Uh, so the dogs and cats and every animal was outside. Um, so I didn't have the fur problem when I was a kid, thankfully. <clears throat> have the allergies. But for some reason, dogs like to rub up against you. And that just drives me crazy because it's like, I don't know. Those of you who know me a lot enough know I have those little things about me, you know, perfectionists or like, one of the reasons I don't like to pet your dogs or cats is because afterwards, I feel like I need to go wash my hands immediately. But the number one thing that would drive me crazy and still does to this day is a dog's nose. <laughs> I do not want a dog's cold, wet nose on me. It's bad enough if they're on your trousers, but if summer you're wearing shorts, which I grew up wearing very hot summers, 
I was like, why does that dog want to stick its nose on my leg? Because I, you know, and I was constantly, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. I come out of the house in the summer, barefoot, putting shoes on. So I come out, sit on the front porch, sit down to put my shoes on. And all three dogs would be right there with their heads right in front of me. And I'm like, boom, I'm trying to put my shoes on. But that was my main issue with Shorty. He just always wanted to stick his nose on me. And dogs do annoying things. The cats do annoying things. Those if you have birds or fish or whatever. And the reason I brought that up this morning is because we read this passage about Jesus being a good shepherd. How many of you grew up around sheep? Yeah. None of us. None of us. I didn't either. And so it's kind of hard for us to relate. And how she act, and you know, and I read things about them, and they say she aren't apparently aren't real bright, and they kind of just follow the leader, you know. Somebody's doing something, they just follow him, and they need a lot of care, and they need a shepherd who cares about them and guards them and takes care of them. Otherwise, they get themselves in a lot of trouble. And I would imagine a shepherd probably gets so frustrated at times. It's like, why is that stupid sheep doing that? Why did that sheep want to all the way over there and then, you know, get stuck in the thorns or, or <coughs> fall off the cliff and can't get back up? Because, you know, the same sheep will do that. They'll fall down, you know, they'll go looking for grass, and next thing you know, they got themselves trapped. And I just thought, maybe it would be easier for us to relate if we brought it a little bit more modern about your dog, your cat, or whatnot. And imagine what it must be like for a shepherd to try to work with and handle and deal with and take care of the sheep, just like you with your dog or your cat. And what is it like for God trying to deal with us sometimes? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, yes, God loves us. You love your pet. Shepherd loves its, their sheep. But think of the patience God has with you. Think of how much God cares about you, and because of that, when you mess up, when you do those crazy things over and 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 over, and over again, how patient. The good shepherd is. And how loving and caring. You know, the scripture says that the good shepherd cares about us, and, and, and if it was just somebody on higher hand taking care of it, well, the higher hand is not going to care as much. And if the wolf comes, they're out of there because they don't want to lose their life. But the shepherd is going to be there defending even at their own peril, getting rid of the wolf so that the sheep is okay. Because the shepherd loves. It'd be the same with you. If you've ever looked after somebody else's pet, you didn't love that pet or care for that pet as much as the owner did. Jesus, the good shepherd, loves us because we belong And the other part of this is Jesus. God calls us to be, to treat others the same. Jesus told his followers to love one another. God expects us to care for one another even when that other person across the room this morning annoys you as much as your pet does sometimes. And you're questioning, why do they do that over and over and over again? Why don't they stop? Why do they have to do that? It just annoys me. And 
again. Just like Jesus is a good shepherd and loves us and cares for us, no matter how many wild and crazy things we do and how many mistakes we've made and do and committed, we are called to love one another. In spite of all the crazy mistakes that others do sometimes. Because when you think about, you know, you can look around the room and think, oh yeah, that person does that, or that person does this, or you know, I wish that person would have been that sometimes, or I don't understand their personality at all. Do you know how many people in the room are saying the exact same thing about me? Now I know none of you think there's that one thing wrong with me. <laughs> but I'm glad that even though you know me, especially you've been here for a few years, you know many of my crazy habits and things that I do. But I'm glad you still love me and care about me. Because in spite of all your craziness, I still love and care about you. And I hope that you love and care about each other. Because we all need a pet owner once in a while. We all need a shepherd. And yes, Jesus is our own. we are also called to once in a while shepherd each other. And when somebody does something, you're like, oh, that stupid idiot, what were they thinking? Bless their heart. Would you remember to love them? Would you be sheep? Oh Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that as our good shepherd, you put up with us. So many times we do wild, crazy things, and so many times we neglect you in our lives and do crazy things. And often there are times when we just turn our backs on you by the things we do. And yet you love us. And just like you told the parable of the hundred sheep and the ninety-nine were safe in the fold, but there was one that was still out. And you left the ninety-nine and you went out looking for that one. That's how much you love each one in this room. Maybe this morning, God, to make sure that we are okay. And likewise, God, may we be your hands, your feet, your voice, your touch to each other. No matter how many crazy or annoying or bizarre things we think each other does. your eyes and offering. May God bless you as you give. Thank you again for your you. And if you have it in your blue card, uh, please just help us as the board to know. But I would like you to let you know that many have and the things are looking much more positive but thank you. We've had some who have given one offs that are really helping us.
uh, an open thing. That means you don't have to be a member of our church to receive communion with us. Everyone is welcome. You are welcome to come and receive with us. Kevin and I will be the servants this morning. As you come forward, we'll take the wafer, dip it in the juice, and hand it to you for you to take. We will offer a short blessing for you as well. May you may return to your seat. Please note that you are welcome to receive the blessing. <coughs> as we come to this table this morning, may you remember that God is your shepherd. And you come to receive from your shepherd this morning the love.
God, for these gifts that you have given us. We give you glory, honor, and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. I trust that Jesus Christ has touched you, showed you how much God loves for you, and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to join us for a time of fellowship again through that back door for something to drink and a piece of cake to get to know us a little bit better and be our guest. Don't forget to come back Thursday night at 7 p.m. for our praise and prayer service, and then again the next Sunday. <laughs> Let us bless. Friends, our worship is ended. Now let our service begin. Go from this place, for you are children of God, and the whole world awaits you. Love passionately. Live faithfully every moment of your life from now until its finale. For the living God goes with you. Amen. Amen.